Hello, and welcome to Tech Deals. Today, I'm just doing a quick comparison between the ASUS Z170A motherboard and the ASUS Republic of Gamers Maximus 8 Hero Edition motherboard. That's a mouthful. Okay, I will be doing separate reviews of these motherboards. I'll be opening them up and talking about them in detail. Those will be in separate videos that I will link in the description below. Go check those out, please. Now, the purpose of this video is simply to answer the question, is it worth spending the extra money to get the big fancy motherboard? No. For most of you, the answer is no. Boy, that was easy, wasn't it? Okay, okay, I know I can hear you already. You didn't tell us anything, you just gave me an answer. Well, here at Tech Deals, we like deals. Deals isn't always the cheapest price. Deal is value for the money. Deal is, are you getting what you're paying for? This motherboard is currently on Amazon for $155. This motherboard is currently on Amazon for $238. Now, those prices may change a bit by the time you watch this video, and you go click the links in the description below to go see them on Amazon if you want to. But what I will say is this motherboard is about $85 more than this one. Is it worth $85? Well, okay, that's a subjective question. Um, yeah, in my personal opinion, no, it's not. Why? <sighs> Let me run down the list of what this includes that this doesn't really fast. This includes two additional serial ATA ports that this does not, this has eight serial ATA ports on the motherboard for, for hard drives or SSDs. This has six. This has four USB 2.0 ports on the back I.O. plate, this has two. All the other ports are the same, though. the USB 3 for the front, the USB 3 for the back, they're all the same. The only difference is this has two extra USB 2.0 ports on the I.O. back plane, this has two, so four and two. This has a slightly better sound chip than this does, but frankly, I do not believe you will notice any difference even in a side-by-side -side blind comparison unless you have several hundred dollars worth of speakers in a quiet room or you have a really nice pair of headphones that cost you several hundred dollars. Now, if you're the kind of person that has a $300 pair of Schneidhauser uh, headphones, okay, maybe this makes sense. But frankly, if you have those kind of headphones and you care that much about sound, a dedicated sound breakout box might actually make sense for you. This has uh, lighting control. This has some fancy LED lighting on it that this doesn't have. This has colors and whatnot. That's nice, but you know, it's not worth $85 to me personally. This does have slightly higher quality capacitors than this does. Uh, many of the on motherboard components are a grade up in terms of uh, voltage regulators and capacitors than this. But understand something. What that means is that in 24 hours a day, seven days a week continuous use, this motherboard might only last you 15 years and this one might last you 20 years. Are you going to care in 15 years? Either one of these boards should last well over a decade, even left on all the time. It is technically better, but I don't think it actually makes a difference in the real world. What other differences are there? Um, this has an optical out port in the back if you have uh, optical audio. On the motherboard itself, this has a start and reset button uh, that is prominent and easy to use that this doesn't have. And the BIOS on this motherboard has slightly better overclocking features than this one. There's a few extra tweaks in the BIOS for overclocking your CPU than this board. It looks like an impressive list. And there's actually a few other differences as well. It looks really impressive when you go down, wow, it's got this, boy, look at this long list. The question is, does any of that really matter? Well, a couple of the items are totally subjective and up to you. Do you care about two extra serial AT ports, two extra USB ports, a better sound chip, LED lighting, um, if you do, okay, maybe it makes sense. Are you an extreme overclocker? Do you want to s try and set records? Are you using, um, are you the kind of person that will enjoy spending four hours tweaking every setting in the BIOS to try to get another half a percent out of your CPU? If you are that person, okay, this can make sense. This does have some of those options. Most people should buy this motherboard. I'm sorry, Azus. Lower the price of this by about 50 bucks. Make it about uh, $40 more than this board, and I'll recommend it to more people. The extra features are nice, uh, to be sure, uh, but I just think it's a little bit on the premium side. That's my personal opinion. 
Um, I am going to be building two machines with this. This particular motherboard is going to be having this Intel i5-6600K uh, K-series unlocked overclockable chip installed. This motherboard is going to be having an i7-6700K installed, uh, K version, overclockable. As a side note, um, the only two chips in the world at the moment that you should consider putting in either board are these two. If you're not putting a K-series chip in here, you're missing the point of a Z-series motherboard. This one is 250, this one's about 370 at the moment. If you're gonna go with the Maximus he uh, 8 Hero, by all means, splurge for the, for the i7. If you're that kind of an extreme overclocker, if you wanna get every ounce of performance and have the best machine you can build, get the i7. My honest recommendation for most of you is the i5 and this board. This is $400 as a package. This is $600 as a package. Do you get 50% more performance of this over this? No, in most cases. The only exception would be content creation. If you do video encoding, if you do 3D rendering, if you do large image manipulation, and I don't mean the pictures from your iPhone, I mean the pictures from a, from a DSLR or a medium format camera, and you do a lot of them. Perhaps you do it professionally. Okay, an i7 is in fact faster than an i5 for content creation. Games, there's basically no difference between these two chips, and they'll both overclock to the same speed. So if you're a gamer, ironically, this says Republic of Gamers, I recommend this setup. If you are a professional content creator, I can see the argument for this or this. That's my opinion. So what do you think? Please leave me a comment in the section below. I'm interested to know what you think. Um, like this video if you like it. Don't like it if you don't. Subscribe to my channel down here. I'm going to be having lots more of these types of videos coming up. In the video description below are links to both of these motherboards on Amazon. Please, by all means, if you do decide to buy one of these motherboards, if this video was helpful to you, then help me out in return by using those links to buy them. They don't change your price at all, but they are affiliate links, and I get a very small commission uh, for you buying the items, and it allows me to fund these videos and shoot more of them for you. As far as the uh, individual reviews, uh, in the video description, I'll be putting links to two more YouTube videos, which will have the review of this, and I'll be opening it up and showing it, and the video of this, and I'll be opening up and showing that. In addition to that, later on, but probably won't be for a couple of weeks, I'll be doing a builds in cases where we actually install these and set them up, and I'll link to those eventually when we get these done. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.